Jay, what's the worst pronunciation of your last name that you've heard? Do you have it? It just happened. Uh, last we week. were on last week. a radio. Was it radio? Yeah. He, he got everybody's name wrong. You got Steve LeMay, Kevin Hefferman, and Jay Chandra Sharkey. <laughs> Although we one time we one time had somebody who said it and it kind of came out like Jay Chaka Cocksucker. And mm. it it was right. an accident. Yeah. Yep. Ah, I was gonna call him Jay. Yeah, I Chaka Cocksucker was eventually was my nick is continually sort of my nickname. But yeah. uh the guy was trying to make fun of me. And he was a good he was a good friend of ours. Uh he just couldn't remember the name. It's 13 letters, you know, I get it. Yep. Jay Chandra Sharkey is with us. Uh, <laughs> Steve LeMay is with us. Perfect. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Kevin Hefferman <laughs> is with us. Uh, they have formed a very successful. Billy's already shaking his head. I have no idea what's going on. I don't think you mispronounced it on purpose is the thing. I think that, <laughs> I think that you just botched You're all it. three of these fucking names, man. <laughs> like, I apologize in advance, but... Uh, why don't you, Jay, I'll start with you. Why don't you guys, why don't you tell your story and how it is the three of you kind of came together? It, it goes back to college, correct? We were, uh, we met at Colgate University. Uh, Kevin and I met when we were 18 um, when we were both uh, rushing the same fraternity. Um, and I kept hearing that this guy was supposed to be the funniest guy in the class. And I'm like, yeah, bullshit. I'm, I'll, I'll, we'll see about that. Uh, and then I met him and then we became good buddies. Uh, and then Steve Lemmy a year later pledged the same fraternity. Uh, um, I mean, there's so many stories, but, but basically Lemmy stole Kevin Heffernan's coat one night while he was pledging our fraternity. And years later, which is like senior year when, when, uh, uh when I started the group and Kevin and I were both in the group, we were, we were casting people and Steve Lemmy auditioned and Kevin's like, we can't help, we can't let that little scumbag into the group, and I'm like, really? He's still over this coat that he stole freshman year, and he goes, he's a guy. I can't, I can't work with the guy, and I'm like, well, he's really funny, and da da da. And finally, Kevin relented and said, okay, he can play the scumbag characters. <laughs> but there's five of you. Like, do the other two feel left out? What's going on here? They're younger. We don't we don't let them come along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> They're rookies. Yeah. They're going to pay their dues before they start doing interviews? Yeah, we'll let them in there like a year from now. They can do interviews. Uh, you guys went to Colgate. You're way too smart to be doing this. So why are you doing this? Uh, it's for the... Uh, the, it's po for the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Making movies. Oh, oh we, do it, we do it for the chicks. That's uh, right. that's why we got into it, which for the chicks. It's a, it's a good reason to be doing it. Uh, Billy, you had something? Go ahead, man. Well, no. So, Kevin, you actually went to law school and you passed the bar. So you could be a lawyer, but you're doing this instead. I did. Uh, is that dumb? I don't know. I'm, I'm having a good time. I mean, you know. No, I, I went to law school and, and um, we we I graduated and then uh, I went to go take the bar, but we were shooting our first movie. So I told my dad, I'm not going to take the bar. And he's a lawyer. He's like, what are you talking about? You don't take the ball down to the goal line and not cross in the end zone. And I was like, well, I'm going to make this movie. I'll take the bar at some point. He said, yeah, right, you will. So we shot our first movie. And then after that, I took the bar and I passed it. And then I kept going and made movies. <laughs> Which we thought we thought that would be advantageous for us. Um, but then it turns out Kevin's not a very good lawyer. Hmm. So, like, <laughs> we had... We got our first t uh, a deal with a network to, to uh, write a TV show, and they were going to pay us a nice big chunk of money, a little bit up front. And then there was this thing, the, the kill fee, whether they, they made the show or not, we were still going to get this big chunk of money after one year's time. So we all quit our day jobs. We were celebrating. We never actually wound up writing the script. Like, we just never commenced. And it turns out that at the end, they didn't have to pay us the money because we never actually started writing, which was something that Kevin Heffernan should have pointed out to us. But I wasn't the lawyer. You hired a lawyer. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Uh, Kevin, I'm wondering, is it difficult writing as a group? Like, how does that how does that process work? Can you walk us through that? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty hard. You know, I think we've got it down to a system. We've been doing it for so long since we were in college together. And, you know, over the years, there have been fights and whatever, you know, and, uh, storming out of rooms and things like that. But now I think we're just kind of into a system where 
The five of us, five of us sit around a room. We crack jokes. One guy takes notes. He goes off, types it up, comes back, and we just keep improving on it. And I think it's a pretty good system. So you're directing, well, you're directing quasi, but Jay's directed some of the movies in the past. How do you decide kind of who's directing and the roles? I mean, you guys alternate lead roles, stuff like that. When you're writing the movies, do you know this is going to be the lead this movie, or do you kind of just write it and then figure out who fits where? Yeah, well, uh, for the directing thing, um, you know, we kind of had a short window uh, to make this movie because Lemmy and I do a show called Tacoma FD, and we had a window between seasons. And so we got it, uh, the studio to say yes to make this movie, but Jay was at the time directing another movie called Easter Sunday with Joe Coy. And so, um, you know, we, uh, I kind of said, well, well I, c I can do it. And so, uh, you know, they, they let me do it. So that's kind of how that happened. But, and then from the writing thing, I mean, the uh, casting thing, we learned kind of long ago uh, that we wait very late in the game to cast the parts. Because if you if you give a guy a certain part, as you're writing the script, he's going to write for himself. But if you wait, then, you know, the person writes for the movie. So we kind of got in the habit of waiting very late uh, in the game to do this. Quasi was a little bit different because um, Quasi was actually based on a character that Lemmy used to do. And so he was always going to be Quasi. But it was a guy that he worked with back in the day. Yeah, it was my first job out of college was uh, at a record store in New York City. And uh, there's I was in the rock and roll department. There was a guy, the guy who ran the uh, jazz and blues department was a, a side mouth talker. <laughs> and, and he would always corner me and he'd, he'd be like, you know, Steve, uh, the saxophone is the loneliest instrument on the planet. <laughs> and I sometimes like to just sit in my window on a sweaty summer night and just play the blues, play a song for a woman that uh, probably does not exist. From <laughs> Jesus Christ. And You're I would excellent at that. I mean, thank you. And I would talking report, out of the side of your mouth. <laughs> well, it was like, it, it was, by the way, it, it, uh, from the first day of filming to the last day of filming, like it really was like, I had to really force it over there. And then by the end, it would just, slide over like you know it's like a loose piece of meat on a bone um, <laughs> but i would i would report this like my tales of uh, interacting with this guy to these guys uh, every night and we would just sit there and riff on this guy and like how he would play the saxophone out of the side of his mouth and slowly we built this character this sad lonely character who was a hunchback in medieval france caught in this feud between a, a pope and a king and and then the icing on the cake was we made him a virgin. And, you know, the, the uphill climb for him began there. Um, uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, Billy. What are you laughing at? Because he has not stopped laughing. For well, like I just minutes. love that you turn one of your coworkers into Quasimodo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, Jay, was it hard for you? Because you're normally the one directing. So it was hard. was it hard for you to give up the directing responsibilities to one of your friends here, one of your partners? I, I always say that. Uh, writing, or sorry, directing and acting ruins two perfectly good jobs. Uh, uh, so it's, I love, I mean, I direct a lot of television and I, I love just directing and I, I act in some stuff and I love just acting. So I was, I was thrilled. I mean, it, in large part because Kevin and I have been editing all these movies all these years and he's been sort of the, like there while I've been directing these things. So I, I felt very comfortable that when he directed the film, that it would be a very close version to what I would have done on my own. And I would have to do none of the work. <laughs> right. There you go. Uh, Kevin, did you feel the pressure or like, uh, how'd that go? No, I, it was, it was fine. Cause you know, we use all the same crew and have all the same people. And so it's very comfortable, but these guys got the opportunity to just grab ass. So they, you know, when you're not directing, you get to have fun. When you're directing, you're always thinking about shit and you know, where's the lights and whatever. And I think these guys, I would look over and see these guys in a corner, like laughing, having a great time. And I was kind of envious of them, you know? Uh, you mentioned that you guys get in some fights, and I imagine they happen. It's going to happen. Uh, Steve, I'm wondering, the dumbest fight you guys have ever gotten in? The dumbest fight we ever got into was, I think, on our first film that we ever made. Uh, we had a, uh, you know, it was about a, a, a dictator. This is a short film, and uh, he got captured by U.S. troops. But he's in denial about that. And, uh, you know, he basically says, I'm only half captured. We got into like a two hour fight about what was the funniest fraction. It was like, nah, three fifths captured. Nah, <laughs> four sevenths captured. Nah. The guys were like making their case. And we were getting like raising our voices at eat each it, other. And it was it. like, 
I'm yeah. only 17 18ths captured. And like, you know, like, and ultimately we settled on half captured. We went back to that. But that, that was, that was, uh, dumb that was a dumbass fight. That, that was, was a sick stupid fight. fight. Yeah. Wait, you have more I fights imagine. though? Do, are there more fight stories? Uh, I want to hear fight stories. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, look, in the creative process, of course we, we fight. And, we, you know, we've known each other for, you know, 25 years now. But I can't think of, like, I can't think of, I remember one time something I said, I, I think Kevin and I were in an argument, and I was like, what is this fucking chitty, chitty, bang, bang? Like, with my New York accent, I remember saying that to him, which was pretty stupid. But I don't remember what the fight was. Do you, you guys remember any, any of the dumb fights we've gotten well, into? Well, the fist fight between Jay and Stolhansky. Oh, right. Yeah, that's a good one. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we were we were promoting Super Troopers, and we were uh, in Boston, and it was the last night of our tour, and you know we all went out and got really wasted at some Mexican restaurant. And Jay was not with us. Jay met us later on at the bar, so he walked into a situation where he was dead. I so went back to the I went back to the hotel to refresh. I went back and showered and cleaned up, bag. and I met these guys at the bar after. Get a bidet in, that kind of thing. Get a bidet in. Um, I love a good bidet. So he came back in uh, to the situation, and we were all wasted. And Stolhansky, one of the guys in the group, kind of started challenging him, being a wimp and not drinking, and da 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 da. And uh, he started put. They started pushing each other a little bit, and then the bartender cut Jay off, who hadn't even had a drink yet in the bar, and it kind of spilled outside. And <laughs> it started as kind of a funny little pushing fight and it ended up into a fist fight where uh Chandra Sekar rubbed Stonhansky's face uh down a chain link fence. Oh. And uh it got kind of ugly. <laughs> well the I, funny thing I he... gave him several chances to back off. <laughs> I mean the first few times I hit him I, I pulled this his sweater over his head like a hockey fight and whap 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 and then he I said it's time to stop. I'm dead sober, and you can barely walk. But he kept coming. But it was a, it was a. Uh, so Stolhansky was given all these chances by Jay to not fight, and Stolhansky kept pushing and pushing, and finally Stolhansky gave up. It was like ah, and turned to walk away, and then that's when Jay attacked him. <laughs> I attacked. A sneak attack. <laughs> Little sucker punch. Got yeah. <laughs> him down. It wasn't a sucker punch. It was a sucker attack. <laughs> a full fledged attack. Okay. <laughs> his face was pinned where the concrete, where the chain link fence meets the concrete. He had his face pinned there, and he kept Eric kept struggling. And and Jay was like, "Can we be done with this?" And finally, Eric said, "Yes, I give." And Jay released him, and Eric attacked again. And so Jay put him down there again. And now people are driving by on the street, and we're all around them. We're like, "It's okay. They're they're friends. We're friends. It's okay. It's okay." <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day, Eric denied it. He still continues to deny it, but he had a waffle iron across his, <laughs> his face. On on local news. On the <laughs> local news. <laughs> That's so great. Mikey, go ahead. That's awesome. I imagine when you guys are writing and you come on something that's good, you, you kind of are all laughing and building off of it. But what happens when somebody's got an idea – that just everyone is like, no, that's that's terrible. And, and how do you? What's the protocol in kind of shooting one of them down? Uh, you know it now. I mean, after all these years, like when nobody laughs at your, you know, presentation, it's done. Forget yeah. about it. You got to get at least three out of the five guys to to laugh at your joke, or else it's done. Yeah, you just don't say anything, and that's enough. Like <laughs> when you present your big joke <laughs> and you're met with silence, it's like, okay, we're moving on from here. It's a so no room. reaction. It's a, it's a tough <laughs> room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you're going to be, you have to be diplomatic because you're, you're going to be in that position where you're pitching the joke. Right. And if somebody is like, that's a terrible idea, that's not the way to collaborate. <laughs> uh, so Kevin, uh, when the three of you or the five of you get in a fight, who has final say? Like who's 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 the guy who has final say in the crew? Well, you usually, you know, when we're when we're just writing, you usually have to get a majority. So the three will outweigh the two. Um, on when we're shooting a movie, luckily the director, you know, we we do honor the hierarchy of the filmmaking. So if I'm directing, you know, uh, I'll, I'll I'll usually have to make the final decision. Or when Jay's doing, he'll have to make the final decision. Uh, or else it just goes on forever, you know. 
Uh, you guys have Quasi coming out on Hulu. It's coming out on 420. Uh, why that date? I mean, we know why the date, but like, uh, how much pot did you guys smoke in college? Holiday. Is really what I'm trying to tell you. A nice holiday. We, we smoked every day. Right. And, uh, and, and you couple, still did. And a couple decades after that. <laughs> did you did you think you think this would lead to you smoking with Snoop Dogg at some point? Because you guys were on his OGGN news and Dude, smoking. He buried, us. he buried us. Yeah, we were kind of on it. I mean, Chandler Sager <laughs> couldn't even speak. Like he had to do the the uh the call letters on the way out or whatever it was, and he could not even get a word out. And he couldn't and he couldn't understand why he couldn't all Snoop wanted him to say was just shout out the D-O double G. <laughs> that was, and so this is all on film and jay'd be like find this on youtube it's you can see it yeah, yeah. he jay'd be like the d double o g and then we would all be like oh god and then he'd be like what what am i saying man <laughs> and then and over and over again the the double d o g and he would think he nailed it every time to, in his defense uh snoop's weed is the strongest i've ever smoked in my life Really? Well, we, we also had a, a lot of uh, opportunity to hang out with Willie Nelson. Um, oh, man. He was in uh, Duke's Hazard, which we worked on, which Jay directed. And then uh, he was nice enough to come and do a cameo with us for our movie, Beer Fest. And uh, we've been on that bus several times, too. That's a That can be a very painful bus to be in as well. Painful. <laughs> <laughs> well, well let you up. know, we have, a rep we have a reputation for being, you know party people and so both snoop and willie when that happens they try to knock you the fuck out they bury and you so they <laughs> they pick they go into their thing and they and they choose a certain special kind of weed to take you down wait even at like 80 years old willie nelson's doing that yeah every day that's correct we had a friend <laughs> who, we had a friend who we who had to kind of crawl off the bus right we had to we had to we had to we had yeah. to lead him off the bus, and uh, it got it got very ugly. <laughs> All yeah. right, so you guys mentioned Willie Nelson in, in Beer Fest. You kind of teased Weed Fest. Is that is that gonna happen? Is that even being discussed at this point? Yeah, our 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 fans really didn't get the joke that it was just a joke, <laughs> uh, and then at this point, whenever we do an interview half of the comments are when are we going to get weed fest and it used to be nice and now it's like assholes when are we gonna get fucking weed fest <laughs> so, so assholes now. when are we gonna get, get weed fest yes. <laughs> we're gonna try we're trying we're trying we're trying i'm talking to warner brothers i really am well I really am. so you mentioned your fans like they raised money so that you could do super troopers too which is kind of crazy because super troopers one i guess wasn't originally like a theatrical success but got a cult following so it was very successful and then once it was made you guys generated like a hundred million dollars from super troopers too so why was it so hard to get someone to fund that well it took a, it, was a, it was a little while removed you know we had done a dance for a while where we want to do it and they want to do it and, and then by the time that happened uh, the reality is that Super Troopers made all that money on DVD. And by the time we wanted to make the second one, that market didn't exist anymore. They didn't have DVDs anymore. And so in their mind, they're like, how are we going to make that same kind of money? We're not sure that you can make it from streaming or whatever. So they were kind of hesitant. So we just kind of went to the fans. And, and you know, luckily, <laughs> we started this crowdfunding uh, funding campaign. And in 24 hours, we raised like four million bucks. And it was kind of clear to the, the studio and to us that the fans really wanted it. And so that was a great thing. And it, and it was, we were able to bring it right to the fans that way. Which was Did funny because you remember the, uh, on the day one of the crowdfunding campaign, the studio was like, don't, don't mention our name. And on day two, after we raised $4 million in that, in that 24 hours, they're like, <laughs> you should, uh, you should probably mention that we're involved in this. You can. <laughs> Did any part what, of you guys think? What'd you back? tell them? Did you yeah. think back to your first project where you're like, yes, you know sir. what, we could, we just have this four million dollars. We don't have to write anything now. We're good. Let's just split this up. Yeah. Let's go to Barbados. I think then the fans would be really pissed at us if we did that. <laughs> Wait, but Steve, when they kind of turned the corner and said, "Hey, you need to mention us," what was your response? Like a oh, fuck absolutely. yourself? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Of course, yeah. Right away. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Whatever the studio wants. You, you, you have to play by the rules, right? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, we're we're kind of survivors. Like we're we're on our eighth movie together. We we have learned the game and we play the game. 
Right. Has this exceeded done. all of your expectations? I'll start with you, Jay. Is it, has it exceeded all of your expectations? It's had to, right? Yeah. I mean, we were we wanted to do somehow what Monty Python did. Uh, and, you know, they obviously had an incredible television show and four movies. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's way beyond. I mean, you know, it's way beyond. It's incredible. I feel yeah. like we're sort of like fish, fish to their grateful dead. Right. Oh yeah. Lord, you opened the portal. You didn't you want to go up, down. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the dead. Uh, oh, well, I love the dead too. I I don't even love fish, but I, we're not the Grateful Dead. Monty Python is clearly the Grateful Dead. Got it. So we're the other thing. Being fish is not so bad, though. It's pretty good. I mean, I, you know, Kevin and I had, had went to several uh, Grateful Dead concerts and uh, had a very good time. Excellent. I, I'll be I'll be attending one at Barton Hall in Cornell in a couple of weeks. You guys want to join me? I mean, yeah. feel free. Nice. Yeah. How yeah. is that new new bit the new makeup without? I mean, I, I after Jerry died, I was like, I'm just not going. But right. everyone says it's fantastic. But I just can't well, get my mind around it. Is John Mayer playing? Yeah, it's Mayer. Here's the best way yeah. I can explain it to you. I used to play the Dead throughout my house. I I have twin daughters. Uh, they're in college now, but I used to play it. Uh, throughout the house and they would be like dad what the fuck is this shit it's terrible it's awful and then john mayer joined the group and it became dead and company and all of a sudden the same songs that sucked that my kids couldn't stand became the coolest songs they've ever heard in their lives and so uh, and, and they're going to concerts with me they're going to cancun with me and you know the concert experience became more difficult because i would have to go hide when i smoked weed and all that <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Another great. I mean, Mayor's fantastic. Sorry, Steve. Go ahead. No, I was going to say it's. I, I saw them in San Francisco. Yeah, and uh, that was the first time I saw Dead and Friends with with Mayor, and like, I was blown away because I had never really been a Mayor fan, and in fact, I had this like idea of him as a teen idly kind of guy, and Same. you know, I would go along. I bandwagon with the like, oh, I don't know about John Mayer. And I saw him at that show and was blown away, and was like, that dude's legit. Yeah, and, and he's, a, he's awesome. a cool guy. He's a, yeah. I, I hosted a uh, comedy rap battle with him one night at the at the comedy store, and he was it was like an insult battle, and it was it was pretty funny. I mean the the comedian like we were talking about the comedian and how well they did, and then they started insulting John Mayer, and then they started insulting me, and it was it was a good time. <laughs> That's very cool. It's like if you love the dead, you know it's not. There are cover bands and they can take care of the lyrics and all that stuff, but it's like hitting that jam on Terrapin Station, which I was shocked that Mayer could do. Um, yeah. But he yeah. does it and he does it. He does it exceptionally well. Uh, Jay, I am told that you are afraid to smoke pot on camera because you don't want your kids to see. First off, I will tell you, your kids know you smoke weed. Secondly, is that true? <laughs> well, you know what happened was I was <laughs> making the Dukes a hazard. <laughs> and uh, there was a scene where Uncle Jesse's smoking a joint um, with another guy. And, and, and he's like, and Willie looks at me and goes, he goes, you got my joints ready? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, the prop guy, he's got all, the, all these fake joints. And he goes, I don't smoke that shit, it's bad for you. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and so we're getting ready to shoot this thing. And so, you know, he, of course, he's got loads of joints all the time. And he gets the real stuff. And I look at the Warner Brothers guy. I'm like, why don't you take the afternoon off? Uh, and so I'm <laughs> shooting Willie Nelson smoking real weed in Louisiana. And then he goes, hey, Jake, get on in here. Get on in here. And I'm like, okay. And so now I'm in the shot and we're smoking weed. And these dailies are going back to Burbank. And I'm like, what are you going to do? I mean, what are you going to do? My kids know. They do know. I mean, at this point, they do know. I I'm okay right. with it. Okay. All right. Good. Maybe we'll do this again, and we'll all be we'll we'll get high together on Zoom. If that's if that's <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> who uh, who takes uh, Kevin. I'll ask you this: Who seems to take more credit than they actually should for your guys' success? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, we're pretty good. Like we do, um, we do like a shared credit for all the writing, and you know, the, whenever somebody asks who wrote that joke, everyone says we all did. You know, so mm. I, that might be the secret to our longevity a little bit. That nobody, uh, nobody really oversteps their boundaries. I think. Yeah, but who's the dead guys, weight? I guess. You guys might disagree. I don't know. Yeah, who's the dead weight? Uh, though, really definitely. Bad. Yeah, nobody takes credit when they're in group interviews. 
Matthews. That's for sure. <laughs> I feel like Stephen will give you the answer on dead weight. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. There's no dead weight. No <laughs> dead weight. <laughs> Wait, but 25. Somebody. How, how long have you guys known each other? It's been like 25 years, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you guys, have to, you ever get fucking tired of each other? Or like, what? We oh, yeah. Get, we get tired yeah. of each other in one day. Like, uh, <laughs> like Heffern and I, Heffern and I did a stand-up comedy tour for like ten years, and it was the same every weekend. Like on Thursday when we got to the airport, we'd sit next to each other on the plane, we'd talk, we'd you know eat meals. By Sunday, we're like not even walking with each other on you know in the airport. <laughs> we're separated. We're sitting elsewhere. We're dining at different places. Like you know, you get tired of of hey. I'll tell you what it is like. Kevin Heffern, I've seen his ass crack probably one million times. <laughs> and it just happened like a few days ago. You know, we've been doing our press tour uh, for, for Quasi. And he was sitting next to me and it's like, and he gets up. And so Heffernan has no ass. And so his pants are constantly falling down. And there I am for the one million and one time, one foot away from his <laughs> ass crack. And I've been there. I've been there like, like Jay's seen it that many times too. You know, and you're you're like you oh. pointed it out just last week. <laughs> you just point at it. You point you were, at. It. We were together, and you pointed at his ass crack. I'm like, I know, I know. There it is. <laughs> and he doesn't care. I don't care. He's like, get over it. What do I have right. to hide? <laughs> Nothing at this point. I mean, wait. So is there you, like? This is going to be interesting. Kevin, is there like something that these guys don't know about you? Do you have like a dirty little secret or is that impossible at this point? Your guys' I don't relationship? Think so. I mean, I don't know. We, uh, we lived in the same apartments. We, we would go on the road and have five guys in the same hotel room for years. You know, right. I, no, I don't know. There's a secret. We, no, know. we know everything about each other. And it, and it is funny. Like, you know, the other day Jay was like, Oh yeah, Kevin was uh it, like to Kevin's face, he's like, "Remember when you were talking about Lemmy behind his back, and you said, uh, and and Kevin's like, now hold on a second, I said it to Lemmy's face, which he did at one point, but it was like, like Kevin gets annoyed because I'm the guy that like when the waiter's trying to walk away, I'll still say one more joke and bring the waiter back, or like, and there are times where he's like, just let him go, just let him go, you know, and like we have those that I don't like. Chatty, let me be chatty. Kid. Well, I'm I'm it's also like when somebody comes up and, you know, we're at a bar, we're drinking and someone comes up and, you know, they want to take a picture. Da, da, that's all fine and good. And we want to get back to drinking and they start to walk away. And Lemmy's like, let me ask you one more question. And then they come back and you're like, well, well, well we were uh, OK. And he just keeps going. Keeps going. I love this story, Mr. man, because you guys, you, you guys are best up. You guys are best friends, kindred spirits, um, and you've started and you've continued to do something that brings happiness to all three of you. I can see it. It brings you guys happiness. Uh, Billy, go ahead. You have something? Well, I, I have a question uh, for you, Steve, because when we were doing research for this, obviously, we're looking you guys up. We're finding out things we want to ask you. So, like, on your Wikipedias, there's fun facts about you guys, and there's different things. And then I get to yours, and I wonder if you have a gripe with whoever it is that did this, because the fun fact about you is... His father's from Argentina, and he had polio as a child, which seems not like maybe not the best thing to be out there. <laughs> not the funnest of facts. Uh, it's actually fine. You know, like, uh, so it's, it's a fun fact. Because, like, uh, so when I was a kid, you know, like they, they, when they gave you the polio vaccine, they were actually giving you live polio a, a little bit. So your body would uh, develop an immunity. Right. And a very rare but possible side effect is that you could actually get polio. And I did. I got it in, in my leg and it took my calf muscle. And I was lucky that it just stopped there. It took my calf muscle. And uh, the reason why it doesn't bother me is because I'm still fast as fuck. Which leads but to another Broken Lizard fight story. The the foot race between Chan Rusekar and Lemmy. Yeah. So Jay was constantly like, in high school, like my nickname is Wheels. I'm the fastest motherfucker you know. My nickname Wheels. is Wheels. Well, Wheels. I was the fastest guy in my neighborhood, in my grade school, and my high school. I ran a four five forty uh, on the football team. I was on the football team for one week. Right. <laughs> and, yeah, and so, about it. yeah Jay was always saying, like, I'm the fastest guy you'll ever fucking meet. My nickname is Wheels. 
And and I'm like, I'll I'll fucking dust you in a race. And and he's like, bullshit with those short little legs. He's like making fucking short jokes at me. And, wow. and I'm like, I'll do it. I'll do it. He's like, polio you have jokes. Your, your polio leg. You got a peg leg. You got two <laughs> short legs, and one of them's a fucking wooden peg leg. And <laughs> so we raced, and I dusted him. Apparently, I I run a four four uh, forty. <laughs> Kevin, you did a masterful job of setting that up, by the way. That well, you just have to, you know, throw a drop in there and then the blood, and then these two guys will go at each other. It's good. Right. Uh, Jay, is that the way you remember that race? I mean. Well, there were there were three races. Uh, oh. And I lost all three of them. There was there was on, uh, on grass with sneakers. There was on cement about a year later with sneakers. And then we did on grass barefoot, and I lost all three. <laughs> Uh, and, and then I said, okay, I'm the second fastest guy in Broken Lizard. <laughs> so what, when you lost the first one, you tried to change the game? Well, change the shot. playing field? I mean, yes. <laughs> Clay court. Most of court. Uh, yeah. Classic wheels. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Quasi is coming out. It's their latest movie. <laughs> By the way, who came up with the name Broken Lizard? Chandra Sekar did. Spent about three days smoking weed and and kind of trying to come up with the comedy group name because I, I was going to go to the poster shop and make posters. And for a while, we were uh, um, four white guys in an engine. Uh, <laughs> and then I went to the uh, poster place. It was a different time. Uh, yeah. Then I went to the poster place with um, the, the, the chocolate bikinos, chocolate bikini speedo team. Uh, and I got there. And I told the poster guy, it's going to be the chocolate bikini speedo, speedo team. He goes, what's that? And I'm like, I don't know. You don't like it? He goes, it's all right. And uh, <laughs> so then, now I'm like at the poster place. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. Maybe it's not good. And so I, you know, I really wanted people to think about us in the same breath as Monty Python. And so I said, okay, let's, let's come up with a name that's, you know, Monty Python, Broken Lizard. So I thought Lizard Python, and I just said, it was, they named it both Broken Lizard. Right. And I came Jesus, you were fucking high, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. did, you, did you tell Those anyone guys, or I you just printed the poster? poster? Yeah. He didn't, didn't tell, tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> we had, had, we had, had, we had, Kevin's not lying. We, we had had this three day, basically like, you know, the NCAA basketball tournament where like everybody brought like 30 names to the table and it's like, we debated them, smoked pot. Three days go by. We finally settled on, you know, chocolate speedo, whatever it was. And uh, and then the day of our first show, our first live show, uh, the flyers get delivered and, and we were broken lizard. So, you know, <laughs> at that point, we're like, all right, we're broken lizard. Let's do this. Uh, Quasi streaming on Hulu starting on April 20th. Uh, guys, go ahead. Tell us about it. Like, uh, Kevin, I'll start with you. Tell us about uh, tell us about Quasi. Well, it's a story about this lovable loser, this hunchback, and uh, it's kind of our spin on the Quasimodo story, and it has nothing to do with the uh, the original Quasimodo story. Sure. Uh, but it's about this guy who finds himself in a conflict between the Pope and the King, and at the same time he falls in love with the Queen and uh, and tries to get himself out of all those problems. So it's fun because we, we play multiple characters, kind of like Monty Python, so... Um, every every guy has a, a couple of characters, and it's kind of a throwback to what we used to do before, you know, the cop movies and stuff. Was we liked funny wigs and costumes and accents, and uh, so we this guy gave us a chance to kind of go back to that and do this kind of silly stuff. So it's 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 very funny and and somewhat different, you know, from the Super Trooper movies. Uh, Jay, do you guys feel like this is the best movie you've made, or what do you think? Well, you know, it's. It's a funny thing. It's like we don't really have a great relationship to our movies after they come out. It's just you can find fans of Club Dread and you know Super Troopers and Number Two. Like it's just sort of all I want is that each movie to be uh, good enough that it gets us to make another movie. And I think, <laughs> in my view, Kevin's done a, a great job, and he's he, and and I think we'll get another movie out of this. Well, thank you. It's a good movie. It's it's a damn good movie. Do you have something that you're thinking of next already, or you just kind of wait till you get the next movie before you come up with the concept? Super Troopers Three, Super Troopers Three. I saw it's called like Winter Soldier or something, right? 
Mm -hmm. I'm trying to convince these guys to shoot in the in the winter, but they're all just no like these California wussies now. Yeah, no chance. No That's chance. My it's blood's too thin. That's fucking my bullshit. Blood's too thin. We we said to you, we're not like shooting in the winter sucks, it, and you're like, you know, we'll just wear some electric socks, and then like you're the first guy you step outside, and it's cold. You're like, this is fucking cold. <laughs> wow, God, this fucking sucks. CGI like, the winter. <laughs> <laughs> he Summer soldiers. Summer soldiers sounds cool too, right? Summer soldiers. Summer soldiers. <laughs> Summer soldiers. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Weed fest. Get on it, please. I know. <laughs> Uh, Kevin, which one of the five of you, okay? Like this okay. has gotten to their head too much. The ego's too big. Which one of the five of you has that happened to? Has the big ego? Yeah. I don't know. Lemmy, maybe? I don't know. Jesus fucking Christ. That's <laughs> fucking bullshit, too. God. I try. But, well, I just only think, like, who's who's the biggest diva, right? Hold on a second. Yeah. I have sacrifice. I'd have to agree with you. I'd have to agree with you, Kevin. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. I'll fucking come at Chandra Sekar in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I'm the least vain person in this group. I, I've like, have you seen what the character I play in this movie? I'm covered in shit. And my mouth is on the side of my head. But you still look good, man. Thanks, baby. In, in, uh, in Beer Fest, do you know how hard I took one for the team? Sure. I, I shaved male pattern baldness into the front three inches of my head and permed my hair. I was freshly That's single. True. I was psyched to go to this college town and just lay it down. <laughs> just lay it down and but there i was in glasses and i had the the sean pan carlitos way for for fucking 10 weeks of my life i would like to see say i didn't get any action but i actually got more action than i've ever gotten in my <laughs> fucking life uh making that movie but but True. like but then i had to wait for reshoots and this part started to grow in like short and straight and this part grew out even more hideous i fucking sacrificed the team i'm like I may take the longest in the makeup chair, but that doesn't make me a diva. That's all I'll say about that. Well, you had the Kleinfeld look while we're working. Dude, I can't even. Should have got an Oscar, bro. Should have got an Oscar. Should have got an Oscar. Yeah. Should have got an Oscar. Kevin was naked covered in powdered sugar for a movie. Like, yeah, right, you man. could have it so bad. Right. That's on film forever. In Super Troopers 2, I did naked cartwheels. I got my dick out there. He's not the only one. <laughs> But did you have to you, you covered in powder you fluff yourself beforehand? I didn't fluff myself. I, you, fluffed, you fluffed yourself. I, he's still fluffed he's still complaining about him having not fluffed himself. He should you should have fluffed yourself, bro. No, as the character wouldn't have fluffed. Have you seen you know what? From that movie, go go watch that movie. We call him the tuna can because his dick is wider than it is long. That's <laughs> it's now, in his defense, in his defense, it, it was cold that day, and Jay picked that day of all days to bring his entire family, like, like adult generations of of Indians were on that set, including small children, just looking at Kevin's naked penis. <laughs> There's nothing out of bounds with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, none of you have ever said to the other, "Hey, too much, too far." Ever. No. No, you no. can't. You right. can't. It's the House of Pain style of comedy. You know what these guys did to me? Do you know what these fucking assholes did to me? <laughs> we made when we made our movie Beer Fest, I my I did this thing in it. My character, Finkelstein, does a strikeout, which is a bong hit. And then you do a shot, chug a full beer, and then blow the smoke out. Something we used to do in college. Now, obviously, I was like, if we're gonna do this on camera i want to do it for real i'm not going to pussyfoot about this and we're not cutting so i'm really going to do it so again it's like one of these days where you look at the prop guy you're like why don't you take a walk around the block <laughs> and i put you know i put the weed in there we had the tequila i had the real beer i did a really nice bong hit and and uh strike out on the first take and and jay comes up to me he's like uh you need to it didn't you didn't fill the bong up all the way we need to do this again <laughs> and so, you know, I do the second one. I fucking rip a massive bong hit. And like, you know, I do the strikeout. These guys keep coming out to me. They're like, it just, you, you have to fill it up more. It's like, just from the camera, it doesn't look like it's it's full. It needs to be thicker. So I'm each time I'm getting deeper and deeper bong hits. 
I did five of these things. Now, one of these things will kill you. I did five of these things. And at the end of it, they come up laughing. They're like, we actually got it on the first take. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Check out their uh, their newest movie, Quasi. It streams on Hulu starting on April 20th. Uh, gentlemen, this has been a delight. I mean, tuna cans, bong hit stories, <laughs> foot races. Uh, we appreciate you guys joining us. You get, it's a great story. You guys are a lot of fun, and, and we wish you continued success. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, boys.